Okay, guys. Thanks to y'all, uh, namely Dave Shaduk, Shaduk, Shaduk. I hope one of those is right. Sorry, dude. Uh, he pointed this out to me, and I'm very, very glad. Um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little embarrassed that I didn't catch it first. But anyway, Dave caught it. Very detail oriented, which is awesome. Um, so that's good. This piece here, this nice, pretty piece of pipe collar looking thing I thought wow that was nice of him to send a uh, a press tool well it's not a press tool it's a collar um, this is part of the third gear upgrade kit it's in the instructions uh, that came with the Novak kit uh, but it's not very detailed um, I think it would be nice if it were more detailed and, and some good annotation about it but uh, it's not but it is in there and Dave found that um, I'll show you where it goes okay this is our counter shaft assembly right here now remember when I had to press this gear off to uh, replace this snap ring that I had messed up well this collar that I just had in my hand is this piece here and it replaces that uh, about a I don't know three eighths wide collar that snap ring and that snap ring. So 44, 43, and 42 get replaced by that extra collar, quote unquote extra, um, that was in with the Novak kit. Um, this is all that's in the instruct. That's the only place it mentions it in the instructions, unless my reading is way off too. But anyway, um, I obviously have got to take some stuff apart in order to get that done, but no problem. Um, anyway, we're gonna pop this uh, gear back off, take this snap ring, this snap ring, and this collar off, and replace it with that uh, bigger collar. And that is supposed to be um, the main part of the, the third grade, third gear upgrade, so. Okay, let's get this bad boy back together. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, drop the counter shaft in so it can rest on the bottom of the case. Oops. Just kinda angle it in there. so it rests. Then we're going to put the reverse idler gear back in. Um, mine's a little chewed up on the front. Like I said earlier, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it's from grinding when you go into reverse, you know, they're like, Brrr. yeah, don't do that. Um, but we all do, so whatever. Anyway, the important thing on this is this D shape. And let me make sure you can see it. The D shape. See the cutout? It needs to go, it needs to be indexed so the flat spot is on the bottom so it, it uh, mates up to your, uh, it'll be either your uh, nose piece or a um, uh, transfer case adapter. So here I'll, I'll just get a shot of what the transfer case adapter looks like. But you can kind of see, like right down there on my transfer case adapter is the D-shaped hole um, with the flat on the bottom. And it that hole is actually bigger than the end of the shaft, so it, it's pretty forgiving. But uh, you do want to be indexed the best you can. Turn it this way. My kit didn't come with a new reverse idler bushing. I kind of wish it did, um, but really it's not going to wear that out uh, real easy. So it'll be all right, but just one of those things I kind of wish I could replace it, but 
I can't, so I'm not going to cry about it. I could, but I don't think I will. Uh, the teeth side go towards the front of the case. Until she bottoms out. Yeah, right there. By the way, of course, this is after the case is all cleaned out. Um, got all the metal shavings. Uh, you're gonna have some metal shavings from just wear over the years, but mine had a lot of crap in the bottom from that bearing that destroyed itself. A um, bunch of stuff attached to the magnet. The best way I figured to get stuff off of the magnet is with compressed air. Um, if you don't have any, I'm not sure what to tell you. Maybe a more powerful magnet? I don't know. Um, anyway, good clean case, uh, freshly painted. Now grab your main shaft. I think probably dropping the rear end first would be the way to go. Just keep an eye on all your stuff. That thrust washer floating around a little bit. Keep your fingers out of the way. Okay, now we're going to move to putting the rear bearing on. Um, we'll install the snap ring into the snap ring, the outer snap ring into the the groove of the bearing first. Really don't need tools, it'll go on by hand. Um, then we'll start it onto the shaft. Now GM has a tool that holds the, the front side where your drive gear is going to go in, GM has a tool that will go in there and hold everything straight for you. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm going to experiment a little bit and find a good combo on how to keep it straight because we, when we drive this bearing in, we want to go straight. It will probably straighten itself as it goes, but we just don't want to put extra stress on anything we don't need to. Just using the old bearing to, to drive it in with. Um, if your old bearing is gone or whatever, I would use something, a pipe, piece of thick walled pipe or something on the inside uh, race of the bearing. Um, that's just how I learned it. I think it's a stronger part of it. If you're going to be driving on it, use that. But we have our old bearing so we can use it. And I'm just kind of supporting the back end with my hand trying to keep it kind of centered and it is kind of centering itself as I go in evenly. Get it good and solid against the case. Just gonna give it a zap on the back side, well actually the front side. Um, the air hammer while I hold the bearing see what that does I think that's gonna do it get my get everything lined up here so I'm not binding on anything besides that pretty good. Okay, lock ring can only go on one way. It's got a, a key there. It'll go in the slot. Yeah, tapered end to the case side. I'll get you a torque spec on that. Um, I don't have the, the spanner socket, so I'm not going to be able to get an accurate torque anyway, but uh, I'll get you all a spec. Line your three notches up 
with the keyway, the keys on the main shaft or that hub. Okay, we'll pack the new roller bearings in the end of the drive gear. I'm uh, gonna use some heavy, some good stout heavy grease, um, just because I know since we don't have the exact tooling to. Uh, press these bearings in and everything real nice and gentle. I want a good heavy grease to hold the new rollers in. Okay, I'm just packing them in. Um, to that the bottom snap ring all up against it okay and that grease should be nice and heavy to hold those for us while we're messing with it your flat spot on the bottom you have to kind of hold the synchronizer that brass synchronizer piece up a little bit while you do this just to keep it out of your way Let's see if I remember. okay perfect very nice I'm using an old tapered bearing race from something years ago. Maybe a John Deere, maybe an Oliver, maybe a something, something, who knows. Anyway, it, it's kept in my toolbox along with several other ones as driver. against the case with my snap ring but I'm not quite to the uh, snap ring groove there yet so might have to do the same thing give it a little taparoo on the back side Exposed our snap ring groove. Oh, find the right snap ring here. Now you've got a bearing on the back, bearing on the front, and she's starting to feel like something special inside. New seal. Pretty stout seal but it's in a pretty stout spot so you want to make sure you go down nice and square take it till it bottoms out get a new gasket line the gasket up the notch in the gasket with the notch at the bottom for the oil drain. My gasket might be kind of hard to see, but uh, kind of restricts that flow. So I'm going to cut the notch in the gasket out a little more uh, so it matches the notch in the casting. Because uh, that's your I don't I don't want to restrict anything. He 
found a part of your bike? Yeah. Over in the dirt? Yeah. Oh. What part is it? The new one. Oh, the new one? All right, throw a little grease on the the lips of the new seal. And then where your oil drain back uh, notch is, it's gonna go in this hole. It's gonna be the only other hole that's not a bolt hole on uh, for your retainer here. Slide it on carefully so we don't damage the seal. And make sure we're lined up right. Okay, and these are some little 5 16 bolts that are supposed to be torqued down to 15 to 18 foot pounds. We got some stainless hardware. I just always like upgrading hardware. I know you're never going to see this because it's going to be inside the bell housing, but hey, we'll all know it's there, right? Our main shaft is pretty much set, aside from setting the torque on the back bearing. Um, and we'll get to that later. But uh, now we're going to work on counter shaft bearings. Same basic procedure. Uh, GM has a fancy tool that'll that'll center your your uh, counter shaft for you. Then you turn it up on its face to do the back side. And then you flip it back over and do the the front side. Um, so we're going to improvise like we have pretty much on the rest of this thing. Okay, get your uh, snap ring in the outer, the outside diameter. Basically, I took the case and set it up with a, a small bushing that I found in the shop here that's the same, oh, a little less than the same diameter as the shaft, and that's about three eighths of an inch tall to kind of bump the shaft up, the counter shaft up, because um, it kind of needs to come up in order to mesh the gears together. Use the old bearing again to get this thing started down in there. Okay, now we'll want to find something a little bigger than the inside diameter or inside uh, race. Finish driving that in. Then once you do get it driven down, get your snap ring back on there. Okay. Now the next is the Torrington bearing. We'll want to be careful with that because um, they're a little more fragile than these other bearings. I'm going to kind of lightly pack it with some grease. I'm going to try and use the, uh, the old outer race of the old uh, Torrington bearing. Um, it's not going to be very stout, but hopefully it's not a very stout push, but uh, I'd rather bend it up than the new bearing anyway. So we'll kind of get it, you know, watch your shaft in there, make sure you're not going to bind a roller up against it as you go down. Okay. And your little bearing retainer cap will go back on. I still need to clean this up real quick, but it's pretty simple. Put it on there, four little machine screws at uh, 20 to 30 inch pounds. So yeah, screwdriver tight.
it says this uh, this uh, lock nut, the spanner nut, is supposed to be 120 foot pounds. Um, that's quite a few foot pounds for just a hammer and a punch or hammer and a chisel. So I'm going to either build this, uh, build a socket or something. I'm going to get it to 120 foot pounds because uh, I just I want it to be right. Y'all can do whatever you want to do. Um, I'm sure you could get it close with the with the hammer and, and punch uh, running it around there like that, but uh, I want it exactly. So before I get it stabbed in there, 120 foot pounds on this bad boy, and then lock it down, lock one of the tangs into one of the slots. Um, then when you put your adapter, that's also the rear bearing retainer that keeps these from walking out. Um, when you put it on, which mine's on my transfer case in the truck right now, this oil hole here, GM says to line the uh, the end of the snap ring up with that oil hole. Um, so since GM says it, I would do it. Torque specs for your adapter slash rear bearing retainer are 15 to 18 foot pounds as well. Okay, uh, this pretty much completes the case. Uh, get your nut tightened to 120 foot pounds, however you can. As you guys probably saw in my SM465 uh, question video that I put up there about the shift forks and that plastic coating. Um, that plastic coating is there for uh, noise and for um, kind of no metal on metal contact, so it's very important. I'm going to uh, order new shift forks. I don't have those yet, but I want to get you guys enough information to be able to get these things in your trucks and going if, if, you, if that's uh, what's going on for you. So, um, and then I'll do the top cover rebuild with new forks uh, at a later date. But anyway, um, with the top cover, I'll just read what GM says to get it uh, to get it in there right. All right, move all your transmission gears to neutral, except for that reverse idler gear, which should be engaged approximately three eighths of an inch, which means the leading edge of the reverse idler gear teeth lines up with the front edge of the first speed gear. Okay. So you're basically putting them back to the way they were uh, when you took the cover off. Um, I did an instructional video on how to pull the cover. You, you get the shifter into like halfway into reverse and then it'll come up and out of there. So we're basically reversing that. Uh, get everything in neutral, then take your reverse idler gear, which is down here, and it's gonna basically, the edge is gonna line up with your first gear right here. And then that should uh, put that, it's that long shift fork that'll put the, the collar in the right spot for that to line up. Now when I've done these before, it does, even when you do get that, it does take some, you know, you gotta be very careful, watch that you don't knock anything out of the partial reverse mode um, or slide any of your uh, collars around. Um, so you gotta be kind of careful and then uh, it'll, it'll all just kind of fall into place and I'll do a video on that when my stuff comes in uh, but hopefully this will get you enough information to uh, get you going back back in the mud or whatever you do um, and then the uh, the cover attaching bolts are 20 to 25 foot pounds um, I got some new hardware for that some stainless cap head screws I think will look pretty sweet under there and then your PTO covers um, gasket those up and um, those are, let me see if I can find a spec on those. Back it up. Yeah. 22 foot pounds on these. I dug a little, little more. 22 foot pounds. Okay. That should be enough information to get you going. And I learned stuff. I learned about Novak's uh, adapter, or uh, Novak adapters. Um, third gear improvement kit. Uh, thank you very much for the viewers who who responded and uh, it's been a neat remembering process and neat learning process and uh, this is probably by far the toughest transmission out there. I think everybody knows that um, and I haven't found a lot of information on rebuilding these things so I'm happy to get this stuff out there and uh, had to backtrack a couple times but no biggie. Um, Anyway, enjoy. Shoot me some questions if you got any. 
and I'll answer them the best I can and we're going to keep rolling on this uh, Chevy truck project. Thanks for watching.